Hey there, so you want to create your game in Unreal? You know a little bit about blueprints and the general Unreal architecture, but you never actually touched the C++ side of things? Well, this video series will teach you all about the Unreal C++ magic I know. We will start with the basics and with every new video we get a bit more advanced. In this video we will create our first C++ actor component and use it in our project. Let's get started. First, create your Unreal project and choose a template. I will choose the third person template and also make sure to click on the C++ button. Give it a name and then click on create. So when you first created your project, you will be greeted by the Unreal Engine. Uh, make sure that you have the C++ classes folder in here. And when you open your project in Visual Studio Code, then you should have all the folders like the config folder and the content folder. Uh, most important for C++ code is the source folder where we create our C++ classes. If you're having trouble with the Visual Studio Code setup, check out the easy to follow guide in the description link. Create your first C++ actor component by either using the class wizard provided in the engine or just to use your favorite code editor and create a header file and a CPP file. If you want to choose the class wizard, you can just right click in the engine and use new C++ class. And under all classes, you can choose which class it needs to inherit from. Uh, for our example, you should choose actor component. If you don't want to use the class wizard, you can also easily do it in the editor by just right clicking and using new file. And you need to name your component and your classes. So in this case, we want to create a super simple rotation component that will just rotate an actor. I will name the file rotating component. Be sure to use the .h as its extension. Then create a second file with the same name, but this time use .cpp for its extension. So the cpp file is the implementation file where we implement our function and the header file is our declaration file where we declare our properties, variables and functions. Okay, copy and paste the definition template. You can find it inside the description. Make sure to change all the occurrences of the template name to your desired class name. Uh, here you find my actor component.generated.h. We just use rotating component in this case. Dot generated files in Unreal Engine are auto-generated files that automatically link your C++ code to the engine's features like blueprints and editor tools without you needing to edit them. You only need the game API macro if you want to use your class in a different C++ module. Since that is not needed yet, you can remove it. The class name will be U-Rotating Component. Also rename the constructor to U-Rotating Component. This function is a constructor. A constructor is a special function in a class that sets up new objects. When you create an object, this function runs automatically to initialize it, like setting initial values for its properties. The tick component function works just like the blueprints tick function, updating with every tick of the game engine. In this case, we don't really need begin play, so we can just remove it. Let's go to the rotating component.cpp and create our constructor here. To implement a function in the cpp file, we first reference the class and then the function's name. For example, for the constructor, we just type u rotating component followed by a double colon and then u rotating component again. The first u rotating component for the class reference and the second u rotating component for the function reference. As you can see, we have some red squiggles here, and this is because of two things. So Visual Studio Code and C++ in general doesn't know what we are referencing until we include every header file that we want to work with. So let's include it. Just do hashtag include, and then reference our rotating component.h. The red underline under include indicates that Visual Studio Code can't locate the header file, typically caused by configuration errors. To fix this, regenerate the Visual Studio Code project files and reload the project. You can easily do it by going to your um, project folder and then search for the Unreal Engine project file and go here under the options and generate Visual Studio project files. As we have done this, you can see that uh, the rotating component is now highlighted in green. This means that it works exactly, but the generated file is uh, underlined red. This is because we didn't recompile the project yet. This is a crucial rule. 
When you make changes to any C++ file, you must recompile the project to see the updates. This process requires closing the engine and then recompiling it. Also, only after recompiling the project, it will auto-generate the files with this dot-generated extension. Okay, as we have tick function, we want to be able to tell the uh, project that this tick function can be run. This is easily done under the primary component tick and under can have a tick, you can just set it to true. Okay, let's also create the tick component in the CPP file. We can just copy and paste the, um, the whole declaration here. We don't need the virtual and we don't need the override. Uh, we can just post it here. Remember to reference the class as well. If you only use the function name, C++ will treat it as a new function. So prefix the tick component function name with u rotating component, followed by a double colon to correctly associate it with the class. And maybe we can just go ahead and compile the changes now and see if the rotating component appears when we create an actor. So go under the run and debug tab and go under launch third person project editor and either use development or debug game. I will just use development in this case, click on launch and then it should launch your project. Okay, so we are here under the Unreal Engine and everything should be compiled, but how can we check this actually? Well, this should be very easy. We just need to go under our content and create a new Blueprint class and just go and create an actor. In this case, we just call it test cube maybe because we will add a new cube. Um, go under add and use static mesh and Click here and maybe search for a cube or any mesh that you like. Um, compile the changes and drag that cube in. So now we have a cube. Okay. With this cube, we will add our new rotating component. Um, so click on add, search for rotating and you should see rotating under custom. Click on it and our new rotating component appears. When we compile and we go under the play button, nothing should happen, of course, because we didn't do anything actually. But as you can see, it's very easy to create a new component. And uh, we have done that. We added a new component under the actor. Now we create our functionality for this actor actually. So close the Unreal Engine again. And maybe just reload the window. Because then actually you should see the generated.h file appear and it shouldn't be underlined in red anymore. Okay, for our rotation component, we actually need some variables. In this case, we use a vector and we define a rotation axis. To create a variable, first specify its type, then its name followed by a semicolon. To modify the variable in the blueprint editor, also include a u property specifier. The U property macro integrates the variable into Unreal's reflection system, crucial for interacting with blueprints and ensuring that pointers to assets like animation, montage, sounds, and arrays remain valid throughout your class's lifetime. The U property macro supports additional options like Edit Anywhere, which lets you modify the property directly from Unreal's property window. So, when we have done this and we create just another variable, like for example a float variable for the rotation speed and we recompile our changes by clicking on the green triangle then we should see our two variables appear under the property window inside the actor component okay and as you can see when we click on the rotating component and we look at the property window we can see a rotating component here our rotation axis and our rotation speed. So this is working fine. We can define a axis here, for example, the one uh, in the Z and one in the Y and also rotation speed maybe of 30. As the next step, let's build the rotation functionality. Close Unreal again. First of all, we should call super for the tick function. In Unreal Engine C++, super is a way to use features from a class's parent class. For begin play, in tick, you always need to call super as the parent actor component class contains crucial functionality. In order to rotate the actor, we want to create a new rotation. 
The new rotation will be calculated by using the rotation axis, multiplying it with the rotation speed, and then multiplying it with the delta time, and then we have our new rotation. Now we just need to set the new rotation with get owner. This is the owner of the actor component, so this will be the actor. And then you can just go and do add actor local rotation. And we create a quaternion from our new Euler rotation. We can also use auto as the variable type. The auto data type in C++ is useful because it lets the compiler automatically figure out the type of the variable. This means you don't have to explicitly state the variable's type, which can make your code shorter and easier to read. And if we compile our changes, you will see that our cube should rotate now. Okay, let's go and play. And as you can see, our cube is rotating now. Maybe we want to also create some default variables. We can do this under the constructor. So the constructor, like I mentioned, will be the place where you want to set your default values for your variables. We can maybe define the rotation axis um, in default as a vector where the x is 0, the y is 0, and maybe the, one, uh, the z is a 1. So it will rotate on the z axis. And maybe we just do a rotation speed, a default rotation speed of 20. It is better if we just go for 20.0f. Compile. Okay, so as you can see, our rotation speed is the same like we had before. And when we reset this property to its default value, then it's appearing as a z axis of 1. And if we reset our rotation speed also, it will be changed to 20. So these default values are coming from the constructor. In the next video, we will go through all the different kinds of property specifiers and also go into the details when and why you would need your property. Afterwards, we will also go through your function decorators, the Unreal event system, how you can lazy load your assets and so on. Stay tuned and thank you so much for watching this video and see you next time.